Hi, these are the top 10 films of 1944. When I say top, I mean my personal favourite films. In a number 10, a Canterbury Tale. The marvellous Powell and Pressburger certainly do things their own way. This film takes the title from Chaucer's classic, but has its own unique take on a pilgrimage. When it begins, it seems like it's going to be a period piece that follows the book. But after one of the greatest cuts in film history, things change completely. The story they then tell is a contemporary tale set in the beautiful English countryside. A story about a man who throws glue in women's hair. Yes, look, my hair's full of it. Oh, it's the glue man, all right. Glue man? Have a look, dearie. It's rather odd, but it's further proof that Powell and Pressburger are anything but predictable. In a number nine, Lifeboat. Hitchcock directs this high sea survival picture. After a passenger vessel is torpedoed by a German U-boat, we follow a group of survivors on a lifeboat. It's a ragtag bunch, including a sassy reporter and even the U-boat captain himself. At the time, there were complaints that the German was portrayed too sympathetically. I'm not sure what film they were watching. He may be jolly at times, but he's a backstabbing evil bastard throughout. The first half is brilliant and is surprisingly brutal. The second half tries to ramp up the stakes and feels a little bit more fictional, but this is a well-crafted film and has my favourite Hitchcock cameo. In a number eight, This Happy Breed. David Lean directs this adaptation of Noel Coward's play of the same name. It's kind of a precursor to the kitchen sink dramas. We follow a family from the end of World War I all the way up to the beginning of World War II. It's a tender portrayal of family life. Horrid things happen to them along the way, but the love endures and the family keeps calm and carries on. The passing of time is handled excellently, and this film shows just how well Lean could direct actors. In a number seven, The Private Life of a Cat. Maya Deren and Alexander Hammett are best known for their experimental shorts, but this documentary about a family of cats is quite fascinating. We follow a mother cat as she gives birth to a litter of kittens, Watching them being born in an extreme close-up is bizarre. We then follow the mother cat care for them, from them learning to walk to their father's reaction to meeting them for the first time. It's beautifully shot and the editing excellently tells this simple story. Should this 22-minute film about cats be in the top 10? Probably not, but I like cats, so sue me. In a number six, Jammin' the Blues. I also love jazz. This short collects a group of well-known jazz musicians of the period and shows them playing a jam session. That's the premise anyway. It's more of a 1940s music video. It looks beautiful and of course the music is wonderful. Number five, Laura, Otto Preminger's classic film noir. Dana Andrews plays a New York detective investigating the murder of a successful woman who was killed with a shotgun blast to the face. There is a small pool of suspects, including Vincent Price playing a sexy hunk. Along the way, there are many twists and turns. It's riveting stuff, but when Andrews keeps playing his baseball game toy thing, some of the tension disappears. Be like having in a contemporary drama a policeman just keep playing on his phone. Here it is. I knew there must be one around somewhere. The police are very fussy about their inventories. That key isn't on the list of things that were in that drawer yesterday. And then it's made a recent reappearance. Will you please stop darling with that infernal puzzle? It's getting on my nerves. In a number four, to have and have not. 
Howard Hawks takes Ernest Hemingway's novel and tries to make a movie as close to Casablanca as he possibly can. Much like that film, it's set in a foreign location during the war where people from all around the world are stuck. And much like that film, they wait in a bar for their chance to escape. And much like that film, there's a famous pianist playing hits. Of course, it's very similar to Casablanca, and it isn't as good, but it does have some unique elements that set it apart. Mainly the chemistry between Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. This is the film where they met, and it's incredibly steamy. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. <laughs> Both are brilliant in it, as is Hoagy Carmichael as the resident pianist. In a number three, Gaslight, Ingrid Bergman stars in this very influential psychological thriller. She is marvellous as a young opera singer who is still mentally struggling with the unsolved murder of her aunt years prior. After a short romance, she marries a gentleman who convinces her to move back to the London home where the grisly crime took place. Once there, he begins to manipulate her into thinking she's going bonkers. It's the film where the term gaslighting comes from, and Ingrid Bergman shows the confusion and self-doubt perfectly. It's a wonderful performance in a great film. In a number two, The Curse of the Cat People, possibly the strangest sequel of all time. The first film was about people who turn into cats when they have sex. This sequel has the same characters, but is noticeable for its lack of cat people. In fact, I think there's only one cat in it. This film is about a little girl who has an imaginary friend who seems to look like her father's dead ex-wife. It's camp. Oh. It's weird. After all, the first spanking, it's an important occasion. And it's scary. And always, his cold arms around you, clasping you into the cavity of his bony chest. And then, forever, you must ride, and ride, and ride, with the headless horseman. But the fact that there aren't any cat people really makes it for me. I love the idea of fans of the original going to see this in the cinema and being absolutely bamboozled and disappointed. This is a really odd film, and for that, I love it. Who is she? That woman is an imposter. She's a liar and a cheat. How do you like your tea? And in at number one, Double Indemnity, Billy Wilder directs one of the greatest noirs of all time. Based on James M. Cain's novel, Wilder teamed up with the noir master Raymond Chandler to write the screenplay. It stars Fred McMurray as an insurance salesman who gets involved with the woman who wants him to kill her husband. Barbara Stanwyck as Phyllis Dietrichson gives a superb performance and the character is the quintessential femme fatale. Stanwyck proved her seduction skills and screwball comedies and here adds a huge dose of unpredictability and deceit. Even though you know you shouldn't, you fall for her as McMurray does. Wilder and Chandler did not get on. Apparently it even drove the recent sober Chandler back to the bottle, which in turn inspired Wilder's next film, The Lost Weekend. They may not have gotten on, but these are two men who know Los Angeles better than anyone, and the City of Angels comes to life on screen. The narrative structure is inventive and arresting, with McMurray narrating the film as he confesses his crimes into a dictaphone. Wilder would use this sort of narrative device again six years later in his other masterpiece of noir, Sunset Boulevard. Billy Wilder was one hell of a director, and this is one of his very best films. Right, so counting down my top ten. In a number ten, A Canterbury Tale. In a number nine, Lifeboat. In a number eight, This Happy Breed. In a number seven, The Private Life of a Cat. In a number six, Jammin' the Blues. In a number five, Laura. In a number four, To Have and Have Not. In a number three, Gaslight. In a number two, The Curse of the Cat People. And in a number one, Double Indemnity. It's a bit of an odd list and there's probably loads I've missed out. So what are your top ten films of 1944? Cheers.